Seagulls, or just gulls, depending on how much you dislike syllables, are considered a minor pest to many and a major annoyance to many more. Over the years, there has been a persistent and rather macabre idea, with plenty of video footage showing it on the interwebs, that gulls will explode if they're fed Alka-Seltzer. Further, when talking birds in general, another commonly held notion is that their stomachs will explode if they eat dried rice. But why is any of this true? To begin with, let's look at the seagulls and Alka-Seltzer idea. The commonly stated reason that Alka-Seltzer causes bird bombs is because of their supposed lack of ability to pass gas or regurgitate it, which causes the deadly and explosive buildup in the unfortunate bird's stomachs that can eventually cause it to paint the sidewalk with its insides. But as you might expect if you've even spent five seconds thinking about what you know about birds and particularly how the baby variety get their food, you'd figure out that None of this is true. But don't take our word for it. As veterinarian Mike Murray explains, just because birds don't typically pass gas, it doesn't mean their bodies aren't equipped to do it if necessary. If a bird ever needed to burp or fart, it could. It's just that its diet doesn't typically require it to need to do so very often, and even less often are humans observing them do so. Backing this notion up is Todd Katzner, the director of conservation and field research at an aviary in Pittsburgh. Says Katzner, the fact that birds can regurgitate food for their young suggests that they can also reverse the direction of other things down there. Thus, if they can pass gas on the one side and regurgitate food and gases on the other, Alka-Seltzer simply is not going to hurt them. This now brings us to the oft-repeated fact that you shouldn't throw rice at weddings or at all because birds eat it, which then causes their stomachs to swell and burst, which kills them. And in some versions, the rice even causes them to violently detonate. But we presume this only happens in the presence of Michael Bay. Unsurprisingly, given what we've covered so far, as with the Alka-Seltzer myth, there is zero evidence to back up this claim and quite a bit of evidence to the contrary. For instance, in 2002, a study looking at this very thing was done by biologist Jim Kupra of the University of Kentucky, which was published in a 2005 edition of the journal The American Biology Teacher. Kripa was inspired to do such a study on birds and rice after an almost even split occurred among his 600 students when he asked them if throwing rice at weddings was harmful to birds. 45% indeed thought that the rice would kill them. They started by experimenting with the expansion of various grains that birds commonly ate in order to see what the bird systems could handle. What they found was that typical bird seed, the type that is now sometimes thrown at weddings owing to the bird rice myth, actually expands more than rice at a 40% expansion rate over 33%. However, one type of rice did show pretty remarkable expansion, and that would be instant rice. Brown instant rice expanded at 240% its original volume, and white rice expanded at 270%. A few people throw instant rice at weddings because it's a lot more expensive than the slow variety. But the question remained as to whether instant rice could burst birds' bellies or other parts of their digestive system. Little concerned about the issue, given the bird's ability to regurgitate and noting how long it takes even dried instant rice to absorb moisture at a bird's typical body temperature, the decision was made to proceed with feeding birds such fare, giving creepers 60 doves and pigeons a diet of nothing but instant rice and water for 12 hours, and they were all able to eat as much as they wanted. Unfortunately, after 12 hours, the birds all lay dead at the bottom of their cages, and creeper was splashed with red paint by Peter after being fired for animal cruelty. Or, you know, that didn't happen at all. All of the birds were completely fine, as you might expect. Not only were they all not dead at the end of the day, but during the 12-hour period while they were munching on instant rice, the birds were closely monitored for any signs of distress. Not a single bird showed the slightest discomfort from eating the instant rice. In fact, Creeper stated, now they're kind of addicted to it. How the myth got started is not known, but it has been around since at least the 1980s, but we're going to guess that it has something to do with pastors and church stewards not wanting to pick up rice after weddings. But going back to some of the first hard documented instances of the myth, in 1985 a state representative from Connecticut, May S. Schmiedel, decided to do what seemingly all politicians do all the time, and that's pass laws that are based on subjects that they are woefully ignorant about, while not bothering to do any real research to educate themselves 
themselves on the matter. Specifically, Schmiedel attempted to pass a law forbidding people from being able to throw rice at weddings to prevent injury and death of birds as a result of ingesting raw rice thrown at weddings. This act was called an act prohibiting the use of uncooked rice at nuptial affairs. The proposed penalty for breaking this law was $50. As she stated, the rice that's left that's not in your hair or on your suit or in your bouquet you leave for the birds. Unfortunately, when the birds eat the raw rice, they cannot digest it. When it gets in their stomachs, it expands and causes them to have violent deaths. I've heard from several ministers who say that the next morning after a wedding, they see all the birds toppled over because they got poisoned by the rice. She also went on to state that she knew at least one other state that had outlawed throwing rice at weddings for this reason. When asked which state, Schmiedel replied that she did not know. We really couldn't be making this stuff up. Several ornithologists came forward and expressed their extreme skepticism over Schmiedel's claims, such as Roland C. Clement, president of the Connecticut Ornithological Association, who stated, It sounds crazy. I have 50 years of professional experience as a practicing ornithologist, and I've never heard of such a thing before. Of course, there can always be a first time, but I would have to see some evidence before I could promote the idea. Thankfully, that bill was never passed. However, the myth got further traction thanks to Anne Landers, aka Esther Lederer. Her column on May 21, 1988 stated the following. Dear Anne Landers, I have never seen this issue raised in your column, but it is something that every prospective bride and groom should think about, especially those who love birds. I'm getting married in September, and I'd like to have bird seed thrown instead of rice. Hard, dry rice is harmful to birds. According to ecologists, and yes, that's what she wrote, it absorbs the moisture in their stomachs and kills them. How can I get this message across to my guests without sounding like some kind of nut? My fiancé is a bird lover too, and he says it's okay with him if I say this in the invitation. KMM, Long Island. The reply? Dear KMM, a Connecticut lawyer has introduced a bill banning instant rice from weddings because it can indeed be lethal to wildlife. But to state this on the invitation would be in poor taste. Ask your bridesmaids and ushers to pass the word to as many guests as possible. Landers later issued a retraction, citing a letter from Steve Sibley, a Cornell ornithologist, who stated, Rice is not a threat to birds. It must be boiled before it will expand. Furthermore, all the food that birds swallow is ground up by powerful muscles and grit in their gizzards. Just shy of a decade later, Landers once again printed the same myth, presumably forgetting all about her column and her retraction from 1988. And now for a bonus fact. Another common stomach-exploding myth is that if you swallow pop rocks, it can kill you. In fact, pop rocks are not dangerous to eat even when mixed with carbonated beverages, as the tellings of the myth often include. This urban legend popped up just a few years after pop rocks hit the market, and the company was never successfully able to convince the masses that there was nothing to it, despite aggressive campaigns to do so. In the end, pop rocks were discontinued on a large scale due to poor sales, not because of any danger in eating them. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Highlight History? You will find that linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.